Do you know what Jesus was talking about constantly? And I mean constantly. He was talking about his father's kingdom, the kingdom of God. Also, interchangeably, he called it the kingdom of heaven. Now, if this was such a big deal to Jesus and he wanted to tell us about it over and over again, don't you think that it ought to be a really big deal to us to grow in our awareness of God's kingdom? So I want to say from the get-go that that this is not something where I can give you a, a theological heady definition and just call it good. You know, there are there are definitions like that out there, but the kingdom of God is actually something you're going to progressively be more and more aware of as you grow in your relationship, your connection with God, and you are led by God's Spirit. So my goal in this video is to give you six basic elements of the kingdom, the kingdom of God, and at the end of that to give you a definition that hopefully will become um, understandable for you to to kind of have a grasp of what really is the kingdom of God that Jesus said was so important. Number one is that the kingdom of God is a realm. That's not a word we use all that often, but thanks to a lot of movies out there, like The Lord of the Rings, we kind of understand what a different realm is about. There's realms that are different than our own one, our own world that we see. This is also true of God's kingdom. It's a realm. We often call it an invisible realm, but that's not quite right either because although we can't see it, it's not a realm that we see like we look outside and we see the trees in the sky. It is a realm that we can see the evidence of and know that it's real. I like to look at it this way. Think about your heart, your own heart. You don't see it. You know, you look in the mirror and and you know where it is, but you're not seeing it, right? However, you can see the evidence of your heart beating because just like right now, I am alive, right? I am breathing. Things are moving because my heart is beating. Not only that, but my heart is bringing the blood and the oxygen that's needed to all the parts of my body so that my organs work, so that everything is functioning and and life is happening. That would be true also of God's kingdom. It would be like that. There are things that are true of it that are actually the life force, I would say in the example I just gave, it's even the life force behind the heart beating so that everything good and life-giving is happening, okay? Uh, Number two is that the kingdom of God is a spirit realm. So it's not just a realm, but it's a realm of the spirit. Jesus said in John 3, 3, he says, No one can see the kingdom of God unless they are born again. And then he goes on with the analogy and he talks about the wind and how we can hear it, but we don't know where it's coming from or where it's going. And he says, it's the same way with the Spirit of God. And and he uses that analogy of us being born into a spirit realm. It's one that we can't can't really see it. We can kind of hear it. We can certainly see the effects, but it is a spirit realm. It's a place we enter from God's spirit as God communicates to our spirit. Now, especially in the West, uh, we, we have issues, we take issue with, you know, the spirit realm. When we talk about that too much, we start getting a little nervous and saying, I don't know. Well, guess what? That comes because of the age of so-called enlightenment, which was a period in history where we were basically convinced, our forefathers, many generations ago, that that actually the only way to really know if something's real is if it can be scientifically tested and verified and all the rest. And, and so what we gave up in that, and I'm not saying there isn't value in that, but I'm saying when that became our measurement of what's real and what's not, we, especially in the West, we gave up 
uh, a lot of the spiritual realm and and we discarded that as though it was wrong uh, when in actuality we are spirit beings before anything what the bible makes very clear to us is that the kingdom of god is righteousness it's god's righteousness it's peace god's peace it's joy god's joy in the holy spirit it's right there that's a pretty clear definition of the kingdom of god righteousness peace and joy in the holy spirit so that means again that it is a spirit realm and we enter into it and we engage with it spirit god's spirit to our spirit now that's something over time where we start to let god teach us how we operate by our spirit more than our intellect, though there is nothing evil about our intellect. It's also a part of a, a gift that God has given us. But we were meant, first of all, as spirit beings, and that's how we enter into the kingdom of God. Number three is that God is the king of this realm, of his kingdom realm. That means nobody else is going to be king but God. That's actually exceptionally good news. You might, might think, well, that sounds like manipulation. No, in God's kingdom, there's always a choice. He always invites you to be led by him as a benevolent, good, kind king. He never forces himself. God's kingdom is never about fear and manipulation. And what's so great about this is that the king of this kingdom, God, Yahweh, is also your very dear and loving father. I mean, come on, it doesn't get any better than this. You have a king who's also your father and who chooses through his kingdom to do all things for your benefit, for your good. That's just incredibly good news. Number four is that the kingdom of God is a realm that the Father freely gives to you. Jesus said this, he said, do not be afraid, little flock, for your Father has chosen gladly to give you the kingdom. You know what this means? It means this is not for a select few. This is for everybody. And if it's for everybody, that means it's for you. Okay, you are not excluded. So the Father freely gives his kingdom realm to all those who would love to partake and enter in and enjoy all of the benefits of this amazing kingdom realm. Number five is that the kingdom of God is already here. Jesus said things like this. He said, the kingdom of God is at hand. He meant right here, right now. Another place he says, the kingdom of God is in your midst. See, what he's saying is, is, is don't look for it over there and over here. He's like, it's, it's all around us. It's within you. Also, don't wait. Don't think that you got to wait to learn about or experience the kingdom of God for someday you know, when we think of heaven as in someday, when actuality, Jesus told us to pray right now for God's kingdom to come, for his will to be done on earth as it is in heaven. That shows you right there that the kingdom of God is also synonymous with what's going on in heaven. And so Jesus is trying to tell you there is much more going on in this realm, in this spirit realm right here, right now than you are aware. So once again, we need to ask for that awareness because it will come more and more. Another way of looking at this, the kingdom of God being right here, right now, is uh, back in the day, uh, I'm going to talk about encyclopedias, which really dates me. I'm not talking Wikipedia. I'm talking about an actual book of encyclopedia where there you would look at the human body. And I remember it was just fascinating as a child because on the, on the one white page, there would be a, a, like a skeletal outline of a human body. And then you could lay over a, a clear sheet that would show where where the where the organs were, another sheet that showed where the muscles were you know, the blood flow, that kind of thing. It was fascinating. Look at the kingdom like that, that it's, yes, our world and what we see is right here, but, but superimposed is God's kingdom world. And the more you're aware of it, 
the more that it's going to influence you in so many wonderful ways. And finally, number six is that God's kingdom brings about the goodness of our Father in tangible ways. So the kingdom is not just an idea. It's not just a a good thought. It's not just power out there somewhere. It's actually the benevolent heart of a good king that expresses itself towards us in his goodness. And that we, as partakers of that goodness of his kingdom realm, we get to share the goodness of the Father. We get to love people. We get to extend peace and joy and all the things that are true of God's kingdom realm. So now I'm ready to share with you that definition that incorporates all the elements of what I just laid out for you that hopefully make the kingdom of God uh, a little bit more, you know, understandable, a little bit more tangible for you. So this is the definition. The kingdom of God is a very real, supernatural spirit realm where God is the benevolent king and also our loving Father, right here and right now. It's a realm that our Father gives to us where we encounter His goodness and release His love, His joy, His peace, His freedom as our new way of life. So if this sounds wonderful and inviting to you, I want to invite you to pray this prayer with me. Father, I believe that your kingdom realm is real. I want to follow you as my benevolent king who is only going to lead me to good places by your spirit. Now, friends, a prayer like that will move the heart of God when it comes from your heart. And what I mean by that is, You're not saying it simply because I told you to. It's actually something your heart wants. And God knows it. He knows what your heart wants. And so when you express something like that, I'm telling you, God's already answering it. You are going to be opened up more and more to the realms of God's kingdom that are so good and beneficial and helpful and life-giving and freeing for you. I've barely scratched the surface about the kingdom of God and all the things we could talk about the fullness of the kingdom. But if you would like to just drop in a few comments below what you think uh, the kingdom of God is or what God has shown you about his kingdom, I'd love it. If you want to subscribe, that would be awesome. And pass these videos along to others who you know would be blessed by it. So man, this is what I want to tell you is, is enjoy the fullness of the kingdom of God, because it's right here, right now, and it's for you. Blessings.